same thing on a debt that you owe. You may take a hit, but there are other ways that we can get that score to come back up maybe in other areas mm -hmm. of your credit profile. So you want to ask. You, you want to. There's nothing um, against yourself or anything. You can feel good that you went and fought for your credit because for some reason these things happen. So if we've got the knowledge and we teach you how to do it, it just takes a little bit of time. So we're constantly teaching and educating. Hey, welcome back to the Real Estate Excellence Podcast. I have an expert that is critical in not only knowing mortgage lending, but many aspects of our life, and that is credit. She is the credit enhancement specialist of one of the top banking institutions in the nation, Town Bank, who I am also employee for full disclosure. As well, she is our go-to support in assisting our borrowers and not only to find the path to get approved, but often to improve their credit so that they can get the best loan terms possible. Let's welcome the Vice President, Credit Enhancement Specialist, Debbie Hunnicutt to the show. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Debbie. I'm glad to be here in Norfolk. So I'm on the road, not in Jacksonville today, a little overcast, but it's it's uh, it's uh, nice to see the home office. Well, welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have you. So I like to always give the listeners a little background as, as far as you, know, you are and how obviously where you got to where you are today a little bit, but I always kick off with the easiest question. Where are you from, Debbie? I am from here. I'm a native. Awesome. Born and raised, never born moved raised. away? Nope, travel a lot, but born and raised, never Excellent, moved. excellent. Virginia is a lovely state. Oh, it is beautiful. We have, yep. obviously, the ocean, the mountains, wherever, so we're, we're perfect. Right. Prior to, you know, I think if I looked on your LinkedIn correctly, that's where I do my uh, little background on everyone. You started here with town in 2011. Yes. Tell, just tell us a little bit of you know, your history of your career prior to coming to town, what kind of things you were doing. Well, I work for a credit reporting agency for over 20 years. They were out of the Baltimore area. So I actually did the credit reports, could read the raw data, things like that. And then, you know, kind of enhanced the love for credit and paying it forward and teaching everybody anything they need to know to get better scores. And that kind of segue right into Town Bank mm -hmm. 11 years ago. Was it an advertisement you saw? A friend of yours said, you know, we really could use your help? Oh, well, uh, actually, it was a friend. A mm -hmm. friend who put me in touch with Shirley Sasser, and the rest is history. All right. Right. I, you know, I, you know, 18 years in the business myself and in, in doing mortgages and to, you know, you know, a lot of times, and I think a lot of agents, they like to look at first time home buyers. You know, uh, a lot of times those are the ones who are trying to get, you know, when it comes to uh, just get approved. Mm -hmm. I know in Florida, which I imagine in other states is the same, the minimum credit scores for dending down payment assistance programs. Those are usually our challenges. I'm sure you get a lot of those. Like, hey, what can we do to get them to this minimum type credit score? So. It's 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 so important to have someone that is a resource. As being a loan officer, to have someone like yourself, mm -hmm. being a resource there that we can go because sometimes it's easy and it's just pay down a credit card. You know, five minutes we know that answer, we can move on. But sometimes some of these enhancements uh, take some time. They do. They can take anywhere from an immediate type of situation, three months, six months, a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of success stories that are twelve and twenty-four months. And, you know, people just, they have to follow the roadmap. It's very precise. If they can stick to it, you know, step by step or bite by bite, as I like to tell them, mm -hmm. then we have success. Um, what, in, what was it that got you into credit originally? Because obviously you have a passion for it. I mean, you, you, you must enjoy what you've been doing it so long. <laughs> I mean, what was it that actually let, you know, introduced you? Was it just walking into a job and say, hey, we need someone to work on credit, and you went and learned how to do it? Or how did that actually, actually evolve for you? That's actually how it happened. It's, it you know, was a sales opportunity, and you know, working with the banks and mortgage companies in the immediate area in North Carolina, and it just became, it was overwhelming. It's, it's magical what can be done, and once we... You know, I merged in over to Town Bank. It was, it's it's a matter of paying it forward. If you know something, and I have the knowledge and the years of experience, if you know something, you pay it forward. Right. We're all in this together, and that's how Town Bank feels about, you know, their family members. So, it's you know, spread the wealth and, and teach everybody what you can. It's up to them to follow it. They have to want that house more than I want it for them, right. which is difficult. Yeah, sometimes. especially the longer term. <laughs> 
yeah. enhancements. Uh, you know, we can put out, hey, we need to do A, B, and C, but that means they got to do it. We can't drag them down there to do it. Uh, there's been, well, for years, obviously, our education system uh, in, in referencing the credit. I, I just kind of want to get your opinion. I probably know pretty much what you're going to say from the standpoint, but, you know, in your years of credit, how important in uh, is no understanding a, a, at least a basic level of how credit works as a you know working person you know buying cars buying houses you know getting credit cards making your life happen how important it is and in, in can we be better at educating the younger people in oh. this area from your years of experience yeah absolutely obviously i haven't been to school in a very long time but if we're going to teach people how to bake a cake or change a tire why aren't we having an entire semester on how to establish credit when you get to that point right. should you have credit cards when you go away to school whether it be trade or college different you know approaches like that don't we a lot of our first-time home buyers they don't have any credit at all and i love that because it's very easy to establish there's nothing there you have a clean slate and you might get a, you know, a secure card or, or apply for a credit card and you start building from there. And a mm -hmm. couple months later, you're ready to go. But it is paramount that everybody knows exactly what the steps are and how they're going to get there to get that home. It's not just the car to put in the driveway, but, but the whole picture. Right. Because how many different things are attached to credit? I mean, from the standpoint that, that it's going to, as little as it may be in some areas, but when you think of all the different things that we have in life, you go get insurance, should they want to pull your credit? You know, obviously any loan, that's obvious, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things in our, in our life cycle that our credit actually enhances how much they're going to charge us. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I, I, people don't realize that when you go to do your uh, insurance for your vehicle that under the umbrella of that insurance, they're going to be pulling other for other companies that they own each month, every six months, or whatever, and things eventually could affect your score going down the road. Right. But the more knowledge that you have, pull up that annual credit report dot com once a year. It's free. It does not have a, a score attached to it, but it shows what's on your profile. If something's not yours, and it's out there, right. and that's almost as deadly as you know not having anything. So you have to work to get it off, et cetera. Talking about that, I had a customer that's actually in process now, and I know he paid off some credit card debt before he went in the process with us, and he got an alert that his score went up 70 points. And I said, well, your score probably went up, mm -hmm. but that's a consumer credit confidence score. Can you explain a little bit about what these guys are getting with our consumers are getting with the, like the credit karmas right. out there versus what you what we're getting as a mortgage? Yeah, the mortgage pull and a credit karma or I like to call it a retail pull from a Discover card or something like that, totally different than a mortgage pull. The algorithms are totally different. So what you and I would look at to see where they are and they're a 640, uh, credit karma might come back in and they're a 680. It's just not apples and apples. Mm -hmm. You know, do the credit karma. I think that's wonderful because it tells you what's on your profile. Does it belong to you? Is it being reported correctly? And then by the time you come to us, then we're going to pull that mortgage pull, the much more stringent, let's call it grading, than it would be with credit karma. And uh, then we can work on how we're going to improve it by deleting something, getting on as an authorized user, various tricks of the trade, let's just call them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it, it's a... It's, extremely invaluable you know to the individuals when did that the, the this confidence score become something you know at the, obviously over time and technology that these servicer has or you know a lot of the larger credit card companies offer some sort of service like credit karma you know where they're monitoring your, mm -hmm. your credit in, in the years you've been involved in when did when did that start to become something that a service that they started providing yeah i would say over the last five years because there's been so much fraud mm. and so as people were becoming more aware of what's in their credit oh my gosh that's not mine or you know it's a generational thing where my father's credit is on my you know profile etc and people are stealing information social security cards things like that and mm. uh, i think that you know those folks rightly got into the market of hey let us monitor this for you show you what we have and usually it's only a one bureau pool right that they're providing but again it's to me i call it a retail pool it's just not 
doesn't have as much weight as our mortgage bill. How, what is your opinion as far as uh, you, because know, there's many services out there that offer, uh, they're pretty much insurance. Right, Kroll, I think, is one of right, and one of the companies are. But th there's these uh, companies out there that offer a service where they are monitoring it. And if you do have a someone steals your identity, credit, mm -hmm. or wh whatever mm -hmm. it is, that they're an insurance that's going to go to bat for you and try to sure. obviously solve it. What, what is your opinion on those services? Are they good? Is that something people should look into? I think if it makes you feel comfortable then you should look into it. I personally don't have it because I check it so often. I know exactly what's going on. I know down to each account what's right. being charged and, and so on and so forth. So I'm always on the alert of my own that I'm going to check this periodically. And it's not that I do it every week or anything, but I'll do it once a month because I know where to go and it's not costing me anything. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this for folks who do perhaps have something fall on their credit or jump on there it's not theirs obvious fraud i would immediately after calling the card company and figuring out that okay this is not mine i've never had one i would do a police report i would go to the police station and i would list mm -hmm. the four items that have now fallen on your account it makes it so much easier to send that information to barclays pennies and you know, who Macy's or something, that these are not my cards. I put this on a police report. Now that gives them some meat and potatoes to fight instead of you just calling and saying, nope, never opened it. Right. You know, Interesting. Do, do the local police departments really, I mean, you know, in your experience, are they, do even know how to handle that? They fill out a very nice form, and that's what you that's, need. That's really real. That's, what, that's the key that you need to mm -hmm. show these credit card companies, this is not mine. I've made a police report. And maybe there's a ring of individuals in the area, so that in itself would help the police, mm -hmm. you know, or something. But it's it's the only way that it gives some uh, legitimacy to your claim that it's not yours. Very few people go down to the station and file a false claim. Because, it, well, at that point, you're being official about it. Yeah. You're now, It's not an argument between you and the credit card. You've actually gone to a third, the, the law yeah. and filed that. That's actually great advice. I think, you know, we see that a lot because I, I think, you know, one reason why those companies that we just, I was asking the question about is because they have the people in place to go and, and fight that battle, probably give you that mm -hmm. advice. Probably mm -hmm. it's the first thing they sent to have you do but the average consumer does not know what to do and they feel defenseless and yes. that's yeah yeah I believe that you it is your credit you have to take control of it and I realize we're busy so you can get a life lock or whomever else right. if it makes you comfortable uh, do what gives you some peace of mind mm -hmm. uh, and if you're into you like to play the stock market or whatever else play with your credit get in there to see what's there and you can have control and you can make these things uh, be deleted, removed, you know, quickly because you've taken the action to go down to and file a report, et cetera. So. Well, okay, so that we see this a lot with some of these consumers that have some challenge credit. They've, you know, called some law firm that's offered this service. Give us a little, yeah, in your decades of experience <laughs> in this, where should they be going for help? All right, we'll use you as an example. Okay. So you're my loan officer, and you sent me a challenged file, which I adore, even at a 350, because we don't have the right to go, ooh, my goodness, what are we going to do with this one? I get on my desk, and I don't get a little afraid, of maybe, of the, of the score, you know, but it's a challenge now. How am I going to do this? How are mm. we going to turn it around? So mine is a time-driven thing. But... Nonetheless, everybody who, who wants to have a mortgage, who, who will go through the process of improving things, I don't like when someone pays $90 a month or $150 a month to ABC company because they're going to pay the bills. They're going to make a deal with them. I'm not saying that that's wrong for you to do for my bang for the buck. Um, I'd rather myself get involved and call the creditor. No one wants to talk to the creditor directly. Mm -hmm. I understand. We want to hide from it. I get it. I get it, but if you will just step by step, bite by bite, call them, make a deal to pay it off, uh, it may affect your score because you're paying less than the full amount, but the ultimate return will be a zero balance because that's probably what I'm going to suggest that they do. Right. Um, these outfits, I'm sure there are some good ones out there, but they'll take the money and they'll pay the bills and they'll pay them when they are going to pay them, not necessarily when they're due. So now we have a running late situation. And that's deadly mm -hmm. for me because I can't have leads in the last 12. So there's lots 
Um, it's because a lot well, of them are, are doing almost like a subscription thing. They want to try to hold these people sure. four or five, six months a year to mm -hmm. get that monthly installment versus obviously hitting them. Hey, it's going to cost you 500 bucks. They'd rather collect 50 bucks from me a month and see sure. how long we can hold you out there. Yeah. yeah. It, it is a personal thing because you have to decide, okay, it's going to take me, if I give a scenario to one of your folks and it's going to take them 12 months. Mm-hmm. Well, you're 12 months closer to having, you know, an end to the issues if we can get them to settle with you, mm -hmm. et cetera, then continue to just go on and we just don't, we never have an answer. And I think right. that's really frustrating. Right. The plug town a little bit. I mean, I mean Debbie works for town. That's just, so getting with a, a town bank loan officer, Debbie's behind us all the time. So sending us your challenged individuals, that's our way of hopefully winning your trust, uh, the real estate agents. And, you know, you do have somebody that might might go eight, nine, 12 months, but it's great when you get at their score there and to call the real estate agent back, say, hey, the Smiths are ready to go and start looking at homes now. We can get them approved. Yeah. It's, it's such a such a win-win-win benefit. Number one question, obviously, we all get as loan officers. I think different loan officers handle this different ways, but that is the obvious question is, hey, we need to take an application. We need to get, you know, get your credit. Is that going to hurt my credit score? Okay, it's that's kind of a generalized, you know, question. It depends on your profile. Right. Everybody's profile is different. I know that sounds like what a cop out. No, <laughs> truly, everybody's file is so different. And here's the beauty of the scenarios that I work. I'm keen in all these fabulous things that we might be able to do and put you on a card as an authorized user, take it off this authorized user because there was a late, whatever it is. And I'm factoring in the fact that when we get to the score that you've asked me for, that it factors in the, I have to pull. Mm -hmm. So it's not a surprise. It's going to put that in, you know, and, and juggle everything out. And there we go. So if it takes six months, if it takes three months. I mean, I've got so many success stories that we thought, may I tell you the one about the 347? Go That's for it. <laughs> Three, 347, <laughs> though. Yeah, I mean, if I, I'm pulling that app, I'm calling the I'm calling the real, real estate agent, and I'm saying, yeah, this guy ain't buying a home anytime soon. Well, the, the loan officer said, look, I know you can't do anything about this and so on and so forth, and I thought, oh. oh okay, <laughs> what are we going to do now? So... I thought, well, there, mm -hmm. there could be a possibility. And our system is set that if you're under a certain threshold, it returns one bureau. So I had one bureau to work with, and I thought 347. And I thought, there is not a file out there that you can't help, period. It may take 12 months to 24 months, but you can help everybody by just doing basic steps. So right. I thought, okay, there might have been a little bit of, oh, I'm going to show this letter officer. I don't know. <laughs> but I didn't expect when I'm sitting there and doing all the different uh, entries of what should they pay off, pay down, get on to, or whatever it is. All this, it was like a perfect storm. There were medicals involved. This is before medicals fell off if they were under five hundred dollars on your credit report. So it was a perfect storm of paying things off. Then this medical uh, thing came down that they would remove things so that they came off your credit file like they never existed. Bam! If it didn't go to a seven. I think it was a 742. I just remember screaming in my office and people came running down the hall, which is great because I think they thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but people, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I'm going, no, this can't be right. So you're doing it again. Then you think, I've got to add the other two bureaus in. I've got to do it. I promise. I added the other two bureaus. We are now in the 700s, over a 720. I never expected it in all my days doing this. Never thought this would happen. I must have done it six times, you know, in question. And we closed the loan. Well, well it was yeah. a hardship case. It was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. So how, approximately how long did that take, 347 to 720? Well, I could get her there in a month, and then, you know, she had to you know, get her closing costs and all the things. So I think mm -hmm. we closed it within six weeks or something like that. Wow. And it doesn't always happen like that. We all know that. But it only takes one of those to inspire you to look at the next 300 and some score to think, you know, we can do this. Was that a using, you? Uh, obviously you have some software that helps say, hey, what do I need to do to get the what ifs, sure. right? Sure. A lot of the uh, credit companies offer that. And you go in and, and loan officers, you know, I've used it at other companies, mm -hmm. you know, go in there and get 
that basic, but some of them have so many like moving parts and you can go in and tell it like and do it manually, move it around. But uh, I'm sure a lot of loan officers, it wouldn't have surprised me if that buyer had already worked in with several other loan officers and they saw 347 and like just threw it in the trash. Most people, in my opinion, most loan officers wouldn't have sent it in mm -hmm. to me because, oh my goodness, it'll take forever and I'm not going to do it. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have the right to do that to another human being. Mm -hmm. What if? And that's what the scenario is. What's the beauty of having you? What you if? could pull your hair you've out. Got, <laughs> you've got a Debbie who's here to fight every day. And so you start from there. But to, to be able to do this, and not only the shock on the LO's face probably gave me some joy, mm -hmm. but, but the borrower. It was a, a tough case. Mm -hmm. It was a single individual. And to be able to tell her, this is what we need you to do. And she did it. She wanted it so badly and nobody, her, in fact, her comments were, no one's taken the time. Well, that's what we do here. Yeah. That's what makes us different than any other shop in, in town, as far as I'm concerned. Right. No, so 100%. We go the extra mile. And it's always, you'll send me something and you'll say, you know, I need a 640 on this. Well, that's lovely. I'm thinking you really need a 680 or a 720 because that's do. just the yeah. the way the brain goes. And I, now I find myself going, 640 is this. Mm -hmm. But if we want to go one step further because the whole thing is to get, you know, a better rate and, you know, maybe the payment is lower, the, the insurance is lower. So whatever it takes and then it's up to you. And that's, again, what makes you different. Mm -hmm. Then other loan officers, you're coming back to your person with options. Yeah. Which way do you want to go? Do you have some money? Is you know your grandmother going to give you a, you know a gift or whatever? Now we have different ways to go. Right. People are in such a hurry. We're not taking care of each other like we should. Right. Except we do. Now it's it's you know it goes back to that thing. Obviously the loan officer is always trying to please the referral partner, mm -hmm. that real estate mm -hmm. agent, and you know that was a huge win. I mean, if, the, the real, if there was a real estate agent referral there, they're going around and they're telling that story to many other agents like yes. oh you got a problem go send it send it mm -hmm. to they'll you know they've got debbie back there to <laughs> to take care of it i want to break down i, I know in, in credit trainings that i've been in before how different things affect the score if we just touch on a, on a few things you probably have a in an order I, I you know i know obviously you know credit pools have a the history do you have new accounts and i put other on here in my notes but i know you probably have it how you want to present it but how that pie of percentage of influence affects the actual credit score at any given time because we often have people who you know they are paying down their other debts and they're like oh you i'm gonna i'm gonna pay that card off you know i'm gonna i want to buy in six months i'll pay that card off and i'm like well, well just don't close the card correct is that great advice that is excellent advice everybody first thing i want them to do is unfreeze their files so that you can pull the credit and mm -hmm. get it to me because time is of the essence right so everybody wants to uh, freeze files so that nobody can you know steal their credit I understand that unfreeze it for 24 hours and then we can pull it and you lock it back up I think that for folks who who have no credit again that clean slate you know we can go anywhere I want you to think about opening up a card maybe even doing an installment loan revolving makes the world go round. if I give if you buy a car you have a set amount each here's what your credit limit is and your set amount and as long as you make your payments that's fabulous you're wonderful it's the credit card where you have five thousand dollar credit limit and you start off with fifty dollars or a thousand or something and how do you you know fl it fluctuates on you're going to get your points from the length of time you've had it mm -hmm. uh, how you're making your payments it doesn't matter if you just pay the minimum payment i always say if you can make a little bit more just to play it's a game and if you can, I like to have folks have their bills at 30% of the credit limit instead of 50% because we're positioning ourselves for possible, you know, purchase of a home. So let's play the way that the, you know, the scores are going to come back and benefit you. Mm -hmm. So the the history part one thing I've, I've always picked up in training is might have even been one of yours. You've got a card you've had for 20 years and you go get a second card that's brand new, it now reads it as 10 years of history, which actually is pretty good already, but it, you, we could go over the five years and you get a new card, now you're down to two and a half years. Right. How, does, how does that actually affect it? In, in leading into what a lot of people get baited into is going into these stores and they go, hey, we'll give you a 10, 20% mm -hmm. off if you mm -hmm. open a credit card account. That's not 
that's not good. What do you what do you recommend to people in those situations? Especially at Christmas, we're going to give you fifteen percent off if you open up a Kohl's card. Right. Everything. Well, I think that's lovely. I want you to think about you might get a small smack by opening up a new credit card. That's okay. You can recover in thirty, sixty, ninety days. And if you're not purchasing right now, you have a little bit longer time to play. Don't close any credit cards. This mm -hmm. is why. If they come to you to let me do a scenario, I can zero in on, okay, we've got all these cards that have lots of fur on them. Mm -hmm. They've been open forever. Maybe use them every 60 days or something just to keep it active because that card that's 10 years old, every time you use it, you're getting some additional points. I don't know how many additional points you're getting because everybody's credit is different. Right. So I don't. I would concentrate on using my old cards, and then if you want to weed them out because you're not using them, then maybe I would let go of the ones that were open more recently and keep, you know, the older cards. I don't open up store cards. Your 10% is not going to make or break anything that I do. I just don't recommend doing that. Right. I think it... Especially if you plan to do something in the near future. You know what you want to do. You know that eventually you want to purchase a home. So position yourself. It's just like going to a car dealership. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to do it. Let's start getting things in line because it is score-driven, even though their scores are different than ours. It's still score-driven. Right. Is there an ideal, you know, utopian credit account? I, I've Again, being at credit trainings 18 years in the mortgage business, we get trained on it all the time. You know, I've heard people like, you know, have a, have a car loan, have a couple credit cards. Is there that perfect model? And because then leading into what we just talked about is, like, you know, if you have a card that, you know, I know my wife's had a card since basically college. She got one because she was traveling around for corporate America. She was doing a lot of travel as a uh, right out of college. And uh, she has this card and she's had that now for 22 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously they continue to increase the limits. So it's got a nice limit on it, but she has 20 years of history with that right. card in whatever points. I think it's got air miles or something with United or something yes. like that. W what would you recommend it to be the ideal situation? In, in, in let's say a new person just, you know, getting started in life, uh, you know, is it one or two credit cards? You know, how, how would you describe that? I would do two if not three mm -hmm. credit cards. I might do a store credit card just because I like that store and that's where I'm going. And then I would do an emergency credit card, MasterCard or Visa, just for emergencies. And I would use it periodically perhaps for gas mm -hmm. or lunch or something just to keep, just it, keep it active. Just to keep it active. Because after how many days and then it, the, 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 they consider it inactive, right? Isn't there a... Well, see, that is a huge problem. People don't pay any attention to that at mm -hmm. all. I who know better, <laughs> went into JCPenney's after not using a card for eight months. I'm Debbie. I mean, come on. I paid my bill off. Why? Well, I didn't need anything. Right. I went in to purchase something, and I'm at the register with a line of 20 people behind. Yeah. And they denied it because they had closed the account. I said, no, no. Eight, eight months of inactivity. Yeah, they, no, no. It, here, and this is me, my license. Mm. I thought maybe there was some sort of hold or something. No. She said, no. She said, when did you last use it? And I thought, first of all, she's smart enough to ask me that. And I, said, I think it was eight months. She said, here's what will happen. And it just, and this was years ago, and it just didn't dawn on me. I'm thinking, oh, I'm so smart. I'm only using three cards. And they closed it on me. And so you just go to a trip downstairs to the office, in my case, because I've been with them for so long. Right. Another thing that they do, if you don't use your cards and your limit is 10 grand, let's say, they will cut that in half, if not lower, because you're not using it. Mm -hmm. So they want you to use it. They want to make that interest. I get it's a game for them as well. Uh, I think that's also to your advantage when you come up with a late, let's say, and you've had this card for 10 years. And you're going to call and you're going to ask for a one-time courtesy waiver. Believe right. me, if it's Cap One, you're only going to get a one-time courtesy waiver in your lifetime. <laughs> because they put everything on the screen. Mm. But you got it because that was part of my scenario when we were doing it for your potential loan with us. Mm. And by removing that one time, 30 days late, whether it was this year, which could be deadly and drop points, 50-some points, or last year, I can pop it back 50 points because they're going to remove it as if it were never there. So things like that, that you have control. Uh, you know, I'm gonna take my business out elsewhere. I've had this since, you know, 2001. Right. And I'm a good customer. Everybody wants your business. And I find that companies are more apt to work with you 
and uh, do things and extend that uh, service. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's very helpful. Just to you play the game in all aspects. You pay it down to thirty percent if you're positioning yourself for a loan. Mm-hmm. You ask for things. All they can do is say no. And you can call and have your credit limit increased. Oh my goodness, that could make a, you know life and death difference in a loan because you're you're raising it uh, twenty five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars and your balance stays the same but now you're at twenty percent right of the credit limit so that's invaluable well you're talking about the limits it, it triggered a question if you've got half a dozen credit cards and maybe you don't even really use them but this periodic you're paying them off every month but you've got available credit that if you wanted to go charge them up technically today you know fifty sixty thousand dollars on a credit line through these multiple credit cards mm-hmm. does that affect the credit when your your usage right is our utilization Mm -hmm. is low how does that actually so if you i could purchase a card a car on a couple credit cards and i would never do it because Mm. i'd have to immediately pay it off even though the interest rate is good that's just not the smart way to go but Mm. sure so if you're not using your card and all of a sudden you've got 60 grand on it and you bumped it up to 45 or 50 immediately you know they're going it could have a huge impact on dropping Mm -hmm. so you have to take it back within range so that what you owe and and where you you know where you are or excuse me the credit limit and and what you owe there there's some room in between Mm -hmm. and and it may be people will say all the time oh my gosh i pulled two months ago for these folks and now i pulled today and they dropped drastically but the balances aren't that different yes they are Yes, they are. They've mm-hmm. gone up enough that it's thrown it out of whack. So now their their ratios are definitely off, and mm-hmm. that just unsettles. So immediately I'm going to say, let's pay it down, or if we're lucky enough and we get a late or something like that, they can be removed. Let's go. Let's go, As we spoke earlier, facts tell, stories sell. <laughs> Give us a couple um, success stories that you've had. Well, I'm sure you always have that one. Well, that 347 was probably, that one goes in the history books, that, right? That is the history books. That's, <laughs> that's phenomenal. You know, mm-hmm. I thought about that when we were talking the other day, and it's so difficult because over the years, you know, almost 40 years in the business, because I did start when I was four, mm-hmm. so many stories to tell. Most of the success that hits home are the single parents. And, you know, they have maybe two small children, and some horrific thing is befalling their family and they have to rebuild nobody takes the time and so what we do is a lot of hand holding here and getting them to that point and you know and you know as a loan officer we get them to that score be it a 620 preferably a 640 or Mm -hmm. something and then we pull what three days before we close and something out of the blue will fall on their file and it's like And you know the struggle this family has been through. And the kids are so excited because they're each going to have their own bedroom. And so with a little bit of uh, grit and extra work and everything, we can get that item that's come back on no fault of their own. They didn't know about it. And we get the creditor. We'll tell them how to approach the creditor, ask to remove it if we pay it right now, so on and so forth. And those success stories are just Phenomenal, just phenomenal. We have an awful lot of vendors, especially in the Tidewater area, uh, that do report to the bureaus. That I tell you, they they you know, hate to be cheesy, say they have a lot of love for people, but everybody out there has had a bump. You know, whether it's been cancer, loss of a job, or something along those lines. Right. And people want to help each other. In the old days, not so much. True and hard. That was it. Nope. Sorry, you had to wait seven years for something to fall off. Right. Not anymore. You right. know, we are all in this together. And little by little. There's something I always, I see a lot is these little medical collections. I mean, sometimes less than $100. Yeah. Uh, they didn't pay a copay or something. Sure. Uh, and these doctor's offices sell them off to some collection companies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you handle those? Well, the nice thing, last July, anything that was under $500 in a medical capacity and is being reported on your profile fell off, so to speak. It's not that you don't owe it. It's just not being reported to your credit profile. It's not showing up on our credit report any longer. That was Christmas. It was Christmas in July. It made the difference of closing in 30 days. Um, We 
Is now, is that just for the mortgage industry when we're pulling our credit reports? It's not going to show? It's not on a credit profile. Uh, so anybody and, uh, across the board, car they dealers, can, anybody will pull, and maybe there were eight fifty dollar medicals. Mm -hmm. They're not there any longer. So that is just going to take it. They're just the computers, let's just say, just took them off. Right. So if it's 500 and above, uh, my suggestion is you call and say, I want to pay this in full. Will you remove it? And if they do, I just need a letter, send it in. And now we've gotten that one removed. All right. So let's role there. play through that transit because that's how the coaching I, w I gave buyers all the time. Obviously, you have, we'll say, collection company X has the collection from Dr. Y over here. I'm calling the collection company because they're the actual ones reporting to the Bureau. They're the only ones that can remove it from the Bureau, correct? Yes and no, because I'm going to say, do you know who this is? If I do get to talk to your borrower, I'm going to ask you the loan officer. Mm -hmm. They go, yeah, it's, you know, Dr. Y, and mm. they know what it is. And say, well, I would call that nice girl at Dr. Y's bookkeeping, see if I paid you directly. Will you give me a letter, pay it in full, remove? I don't care that they pay it full, but the fact is that it's going to say delete, remove. And I'm going to send that into the Bureau because on a credit report, it's going to be ABC Collection Company, Dr. Y's office. Mm -hmm. As long as I can have them stick together, then that's fine. Now, some doctors will say, no, you have to go through the collection company, but I will. Once you pay it, I will give you the letter because a collection company won't necessarily remove it unless they have instruction from up the front doc. to go ahead and remove it. Uh, Bull City is famous. They're a collection co uh, company, but they're famous for, I like that name, <laughs> <laughs> Bull. <laughs> they, I don't know, they will remove medicals for the most part. I can't say across the board, but for the most part, and that's so helpful. And they'll give you the letter once the person pays for it the letter is forthcoming and that's all we need to shoot it off. You know, we, what I do is I, when I give the scenario back to you about your borrower, it has every step that they ever need. It's a little roadmap, so there right. are five things to do. And I'm always gonna tell you that I need a letter or a statement or something to update on the bureau level. We don't have time to wait 30 days. Right. Three to five day turnaround for rescoring for us. Sometimes we actually have a miracle Some, right. and it's on a Friday afternoon and they are closing at four and that was another story. On, I, I've been doing this way <laughs> <laughs> and to get something done from one o'clock to a four o'clock co closing. Whew, a, you got it rescored in three hours. Yeah, I thought, I have been living right. I didn't have anything <laughs> to do with it. It was just on how you approach people and you're asking your provider, to talk to the person on the other end. I'm asking them to beg. Because mm -hmm. if it were me, I'd be crying on the phone for them because I, nothing should stand in the way of someone's happiness of getting this new home. So whatever that takes. Interesting. Yeah. I imagine you working with clients, go back, because I think the, med the medical collection has always been something that's haunted, in, in whether it's not the medical collection, but you know the importance to get the guidance from you on on how to handle because some of these companies you know you've worked with mm -hmm. over the years so you know how they're going to handle it and you might say no no don't call them directly call the doctor sure. first type of thing and it and we are not allowed in credit rescore to charge the customer this is a service town well anyone does these days right we cannot pass that cost on to them is that correct yes that is correct <laughs> <laughs> um you know, I'm I'm look at myself as merely a vessel taking that mm -hmm. item you deleted and channeling it off to the bureaus right. or to my provider who sends it to the bureaus. What do you mean I can't charge somebody? Why are we having to incur that cost? It is a cost of doing business for town. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. So when I ask you, Mr. Loan Officer, that this is what I need, and I'm very explicit about what has to be on that documentation, I really mean, it's not a game. I'm not yeah. sitting there going, hmm, how do I make them mad today? It's exactly what I need to get that bureau to look at it once, blink, they've done their thing, it comes back to us, I don't have to keep fighting. We're all fighting everybody else in town for, for you know, business. Mm -hmm. And if I can get this information back and rescored and done, then we have a loan. And yeah. That's what makes us yeah. better than anybody. Yeah, I, just for you know, knowledge, people might not even be thinking about it. We're we're not charging you for Debbie's time, but every time Debbie goes to the bureau and, and asks for a rescore or update a balance or everything, every time we do that, they're 
there's charges coming back. And, you know, over the years, I think the, you know, the credit reports, just the cost of just pulling a credit report has gone up tripled, I think, in the last two or three years. I'm shocked. Yeah. I, I am shocked. I never thought I'd see where it is today. Um, it's the nature of the beast. I'm mm -hmm. also really cognizant of the fact of what we pay. So if I can get, because it's going to be a 30-day window, maybe 60, uh, or even if I can impress upon the applicant to deal directly with the creditor to get them to send it. They've got an eOscar form, it's electronic form, that they send right to the bureau. Mm. If I can get them to do certain things on their own, that cuts down a charge, you know, for town. I'm, you know, right. So we save money that way. So uh, I'm only going to send in but so many pieces. So if I have five and I get them to do two or three, then I only have to pay for two. Mm. It, it depends on most of the clients that we have are so willing to do anything you know, to get this home going. And again, it goes back to the fact that you took the time to hand walk them through. Right. They just paid no attention to that woman behind the curtain until she tells you what you need right. to do. You know, and it works. Uh, and, and, and important to get out there again with the agents that are listening that might be passing us clients like this. Some of these, you know, we can work up those plans and we can stay in touch and periodically touch them but if they aren't taking the actions there's not much we can do and some of these people really need to go on you know it's like going on a diet are they going to stick to it are they going to you know make the payments and and so forth to kind of finish i want to finish up with if if share share talk about some things that your projects that you're working on right now if you can to lighten to bring everyone to light the stuff that you're currently working on and then if there's anything else that maybe i didn't cover here in the in our podcast today well, we're still dealing with a lot of the medical, and we're getting people to, it, it, it's just amazing to me that you can call a doctor's office. It's like being, when you're in the hospital, you can make a deal on that bill. Mm -hmm. I never thought that was really possible because we know how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. It's a cost of a house or two when you're, you know, having surgery and stuff like that. So you can make a deal. I can do this. And all you have to do is keep asking, and all of a sudden it brings those bills down. Now they're willing to adjust. And the same thing on a debt that you owe. You may take a hit, but there are other ways that we can get that score to come back up, maybe in other areas mm -hmm. of your credit profile. So you want to ask. You, you want to. There's nothing um, against yourself or anything. You can feel good that you went and fought for your credit because for some reason these things happen. So if we've got the knowledge and we teach you how to do it, it just takes a little bit of time. So we're constantly teaching and educating and we do an awful lot of, we work with United Way here, we do an awful lot of uh, public type of meetings and things like that to mm. help individuals. Yeah, educate. Of course, once they get with y'all, mm. You know, they're mine. Well, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to throw in the charge offs. Sometimes you like you run those. What is sometimes paying that charge off is a huge benefit. Sometimes it doesn't affect it at all. Correct. People think that um, just on decent credit, that if I pay my car off or I pay the mortgage off, that's going to bump me up. No points. No, no, nothing. I get very little bump from a car uh, or a mortgage or something like that. It's the revolving and where your credit limit is and the balance and, and how you treat it. You know, that's why we do the scenario and we fine tune it. It is a step-by-step -step process. You can do whatever you want, but in order to get that score within a certain time frame, dictated by them to you, mm -hmm. then they have to follow it. You do it, it, it will come. There's, <laughs> there's many times where I've got customers who are maybe close to paying off a car. They could write a check for whatever, but I, it's like, no, 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 don't. Just keep making sure. the minimum payment. If we need to get rid of the car payment before closing, right. you can bring that money to closing. We're not rescoring you, yeah. but paying it off could possibly have an effect. Right, as long as I can get the score where you need it, then we can work on the debt ratio behind you know, the scenes. People will, there'll be a bad debt, $40,000 or something like that. Well, if you can pay it off at closing, because we have to pay certain things off, underwriters mm. insist that we do. But I don't have to factor it in my scores to get to right. that score. Right, so, right, 100%. Anything you want to add today? No, I just, I'm ready for all these 
files with 342 <laughs> and stuff like that. Y'all have no idea. You're a huge asset and having worked with other mortgage companies to have someone, yeah, the quick one, like I said, when I started the show, the quick one, like, oh, pay down a credit card. Yeah, five minutes we can have that answer. But some of these more integral things where there's moving parts and, you know, should I pay this charge off off and pay that down? You, some, you need someone who can really evaluate that file. And then the other thing, which is huge in the real estate business right now, we talk about like home inspectors, how they translate their home inspection to the consumer. How do we translate their action to the consumer so it's understandable to them and then they can execute? And that's so important. It is. Right. Yes, you're very right. Debbie, I appreciate you coming on today. Anytime, sir. Excellent. It's a pleasure working with uh, you. If anything changes, like I, I, if, well, I wasn't with town last July, but any little tidbits like, hey, this is changing in credit, we should just get on, go live on Facebook for 10, 15 minutes, say this is what's changing, new legislations come out or whatever, so we can keep everyone informed. You can count on me. I'm there for you. Excellent. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.